It's 1946. The Second World War had just ended. Millions upon millions of people celebrate in joy as the fighting stops, without the knowledge that the next five decades would be filled with fear and the threat of total nuclear annihilation. The two emerging powers, the Soviet Union and the United States, both know of the Nazis' V-2 rocket, the first ever human craft to reach space, and both wanted to harness this technology to give them an edge over the other. A decade passes, and suddenly... The Soviets launch the first satellite into orbit around our planet. The Western world is in shock, and many citizens of the United States and their allies have become fearful that Sputnik is an attack probe or a precursor to a massive increase in Soviet military power. Hasty to respond, the United States, who had previously been working on spaceflight, but only for their military, quickly finished a mission that was already being planned the Vanguard satellite. The U.S. had full press coverage of the event, wanting to show the Soviets... Fall back to Earth in split second. The mission blew up on the launch pad, further weakening Americans' resolve and morale. Dwight D. Eisenhower, the American president at the time, was encouraged by this failure to give former Nazi-turned-NASA rocket scientist Werner von Braun what he had already been asking for for years the ability to use a rocket that had been cleared for spaceflight, the Jupiter C Redstone, to launch a satellite into orbit. By 1958, the US had launched its first satellite, Explorer 1. Multiple other unmanned missions made both by the Soviet Union and US slowly but surely started escalating the space race. In October of 1958, NASA is officially founded. By 1961, they were ready to send an unmanned flight into space, the commander, Alan Shepard. But they didn't want to risk the backlash of killing a human in their first flight, so they sent a chimpanzee up instead. In the coming weeks, the Soviet Union launched Yuri Gagarin, not just into space, but into an orbital flight. Shepard's suborbital flight a week later only solidified the world's view of the United States being less technologically advanced and constantly trailing behind the Soviet Union. But the Soviets were hiding something, their countless failures and deaths in their program. Due to their ability to pump out propaganda and their control of their media, more or less everyone only knew about their successes and not their numerous mistakes. But even without those mistakes, at the rate they were going at, it was looking like the Soviets would beat the US to everything, every time. Or managed our resources and our time so as to ensure their fulfillment. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. The moon. The moon. Now that it was mentioned, it was the only thing Americans wanted, the only things they thought about. That glorious white pearl in their sky, if they could land a man on it first, then, then they will have beaten the Soviets. But the Soviets responded by saying that they would get to the moon first. They had gotten a man into orbit first, why wouldn't they win? They quickly started ramping up and working on technology to go to the moon. They orbited two craft at the same time, and then, in 1964, launched a craft that supported three men. On the other side of things, the United States was struggling. Their Gemini program had taken much longer than expected to get off the ground. But finally, throughout 55 and 56, multiple two-manned missions were launched, experimenting with the technology they would need to get to the moon. To the rest of the world, though, they were still well behind. A decade passes. The Saturn rocket and other modules developed by Dr. Werner von Braun have been completed. Out of fear the Soviets would suddenly launch first, the testing of the ship's systems was rushed. Apollo 1 was on the launch pad at Cape Kennedy, when a fire started. The hatch to the command module wouldn't open. All three crew members perished in the fire. NASA was almost shut down to the negative press, saved only by President Lyndon B. Johnson's backing. 
The Soviet program progress had stalled ever since the focus on, of the human population became the moon and not Earth. And as they scrambled to try and get something out, the Apollo 7 mission orbited Earth for 11 days, practicing the moon mission, and then the Apollo 8 mission successfully completed a lunar orbit, broadcasting the entire thing to Earth. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour, liftoff on Apollo 11. On July 16th, 1969, the Apollo 11 mission was launched. Four days later, Neil Armstrong slowly made his way down the lunar lander and became the first man to walk on the moon, putting an end to the space race. Who won the space race? So this part here would be entirely my opinion, but that's the title of the video. You might expect that I answer the question. Allow me to present you with a few ideas. Despite the United States having beaten the Soviet Union to the moon, the Soviets beat them to almost everything else, which makes an argument for no one winning. If it was an actual foot race, then the Soviet Union would have sprinted halfway through the horse while the US was tripping over its own feet. But then the Soviets got tired, and the US started figuring out how to run, or in this case build rockets, and they both crossed the finish line at the same time. If you look at it this way, it's obviously a tie. The Soviets winning the first half, and the US winning the second, which is the way I'd prefer to look at it. Now, to give you a few other arguments to help you build your own opinion, you could look at the vast amount of casualties and failures the Soviet Union had covered up and say that even if they did orbit Earth first and make many other records, the human cost was too great to justify it. You could make a similar argument about the United States and perhaps how they rushed everything too much and didn't treat this as doing science, but treated it as a military arms race to extend their influence across the globe, thereby negating all the amazing things they did, like land a man on the moon. It was a tie between these two superpowers, even though the US obviously overtook the Soviet Union. You can't discount all the things the Soviet Union did. In the modern era, the US might be considered the winner due to their dominance over this new frontier, until the launch of the European Space Agency and China National Space Administration. But even still, it maintains the strongest grasp on space. <laughs>